Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, back again with my second lesson. Uh, the first one that I had up there was a linear funk drumming lesson and um, it went very well. I got a, a nice response from it and I have uh, a lot of people sending me messages and emails and so forth saying, haven't heard from you in a while. You know, can you give us another lesson? Um, so I think if I said that um, I have a quick hit here for you, uh, something that's simple, uh, but applied in the right way is gonna make you uh, sound like a million dollars, I think you probably sign up for that, right? So here we go. We're gonna take a very simple rudiment. It is called the rough or the drag, okay? And what it involves is, is basically playing hand-to-hand -hand quarter notes. And setting them up with grace notes. Okay, when I first learned about grace notes, you know, I was a little baffled because my drum teacher told me, you know, they're just two smaller notes right before the quarter note. Uh, kind of vague, kind of ambiguous. Uh, later on, as I started uh, studying more and getting more into exactly where things fall against the time, I was like, well, you know, I gotta, you know, exactly where do these little notes fall uh, against the time that's being stated. And um, where I like to put them is on the last two 30 second notes uh, before that downbeat. So that be one E and da da two E and da da three E and da da four E and. Well, when I count, or when I'm playing 30 second notes, I count 16th notes against them. So um, I would just play two notes for each 16th note syllable that I counted. So if I was playing one E and da, uh, it would be 30 second notes. Okay, so you get the idea. So now, with these roughs, okay, all you gotta do, okay, to play the hand-to-hand -hand ones, is put those two 30-second notes on the da before each downbeat. One E and So now that we know exactly where they fall against the time, Let's dress them up a little bit, okay? Uh, and the way I like to dress them up, <clears throat> I, I love to use my bass drum uh, a lot. Uh, I don't use, I have a double pedal. Um, I don't use it a lot in my playing. I, to be honest with you, I hardly ever use it in my playing. All the double stuff you might hear me play in these tunes that I put up are all doubles played with the right foot. Um, I had a double pedal a long time ago and uh, found I was using it too much as a crutch, so I never developed my right foot uh, to the point where I felt it should be, so I trashed it for a little while. But now that I have students and so forth, and I'm trying to teach them some double bass things, I have to have one set up, but I really don't use it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do with this rough uh, to dress it up is we're gonna get rid of the first 30 second note with the hand and replace it with the foot, okay? So that would look like this, all right? Okay, a little faster. Okay. So now what we're gonna do to make this uh, even easier for you guys, um, not that, you know, you guys need it to be easier, but, you know, people like a quick hit. Um, and the easiest way to play this is to do all left-handed roughs. There's a big debate, what's a left-handed rough, what's the difference between that and the right-handed rough? Is the left-handed rough the one with the left hand up, or is the left-handed rough the one with the left hand down? For all intents and purposes, I'm going to call this with the left hand up, because the left hand is playing the downbeat, I'm going to call it the left hand rough, okay? If it's wrong, sorry. Okay, so here we go. All left-handed roughs. Now with the foot replacing the first note. Okay. It's the the reason why we're that I'm doing it that way is for me anyway. It's the easier one to play, okay? 
And um, the way you get this to the next level is by doing this. Taking the right hand and letting it travel, okay? Um, just moving it around the kit, all right? That would sound like this. Now, these don't have to just be played to set up the quarter note. They can set up, uh, let's, let's set up uh, the first, the, or the downbeat of straight sixteenths, okay? And let's just talk about this for a minute. Let's make sense of it. We've already got two syllables of each group of sixteenths established. The downbeat and the dub. The dub being played with the right foot and the right hand, okay, and the downbeat. What's left? What's left is the E and the and, okay? And we're just going to fill that in with a right and a left, okay? Again, move the right hand to the toms. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Who would have thunk it? Who would have thought that's a rough? I mean, if I started out playing that, think that rough would be the first thing that came to your mind. And face it, what makes that sound cool? What makes it sound cool is that rough in the beginning. Because if you just play 16th notes, ka 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 it's gonna be, it's not, it's cool, but it's not real cool. This is real cool. From a very simple rudiment, all right? Uh, and these are the kind of things I enjoy the most about playing the, this instrument. I love taking things that are not hard and creating the illusion, okay, by creating something with the easy things that actually sounds hard, but in theory is easy, okay? And this is one of them. So you can use this, um, this little exercise that we came up with, like a measure fill, okay? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, okay? What happens if you want to make it like two beats? Well, if you turn the last group of sixteenth notes into a paradiddle, okay, which would be like this. It sets you up perfect for a crash. So you would have Works as a two beat fill. That left hand doesn't have to stay on the snare, it can travel as well. the same dynamic like I was in the beginning. After all, the rough was meant to be played as grace notes. So that downbeat should be brought out more. More like this in the fill.
that in mind too. Dynamics are very important. Another cool thing that this does, okay, different application altogether. Uh, let's take a Latino groove, for instance. Let's use the Mozambique because it works great in the Mozambique. Um, I'll play a little bit of the Mozambique for you right now. Okay, so where are we going to fit the rough into there? Well, don't forget we've been using these with downbeats. And the greatest downbeat, for me anyway, from a feel perspective, uh, to put this uh, little thingamajigger that we came up with is, yeah, I said thingamajigger, is on the uh, downbeat, right in the beginning of the groove. Okay? So instead of sounding like this, we have this. Well, in this case, it makes that little extra thingamajigger that we came up with makes this Latino groove sound a little bit more like it's got some feel and a little bit more, it adds a little bit more of that, uh, that Latino flavor to it. Okay, so and the, the next thing is when you start to feel this thing naturally, okay, and it's important to make sure that you practice this enough so you're when you're playing, you're not thinking da da one, da da two, da da so you're not you're not thinking of um, how you're gonna play it. You've practiced it enough so it just comes out, okay? Um, and once it gets to that point, you're just gonna start randomly using it in your playing. Okay, so the next place, okay, can we go further with it? Yes, we can. We can go further with it because we can take that kick drum note that we're playing and double it, putting like a triplet grace note or like a four stroke rough, playing a four stroke rough. That's the next place you'd go with this. Uh, so you're just basically doubling that kick drum note, following it with the right hand, playing the downbeat with the left hand. Um, I don't know how soon I'll have it up. I'm going to have a transcription of these exercises up on my website, www.cidrumming.com. I'm going to try and have them up in the next couple of days for you. Uh, okay, so uh, hang tight, and uh, I'm going to try and get that up there as soon as possible. All right, take it easy.